Thank you for coming. This is a large workshop. So we will be here for one hour and a half. I think we don't have anything after that, only lunch. So you can ask me any questions uh, that you like. Uh, so this workshop is mostly about management. And as management is kind of messy thing, you can ask me anything, anytime. I will try to answer all, all of your uh, questions about tips, tricks, uh, workers management, uh, software dev uh, management. Uh, we will not cover everything. We will not cover uh, communication parts. We will not cover all the soft skill parts. I will try to answer all of your um, like objective, down to earth, tech tips questions. So this workshop is about that. So do you have any questions about that? <laughs> so I'll just set up the. So what is the uh, audience here? Are you developers? Who is the developer? Okay, around half. And uh, project managers, agency owners, business folks. <laughs> Great. So, we're, so we have like a half and half. Okay. Uh, I just need to say one more thing, sorry. Okay, sorry for the tech trouble. <coughs> Can you see me here? Can I sit? Great. Yeah. So, did, did you have a fiery Friday night? <laughs> did you try Shlivovica maybe? Here in Serbia? Fiery water, stuff like that. So, okay, great. Um, so, intro about me. Um, I started to code around uh, um, when I was uh, 15, so this was uh, 20 years ago, and uh, a couple of my partners uh, and I started the company 10 years ago. We are focused on workers, on uh, WooCommerce. We are uh, WooCommerce experts, so we are now working with uh, with, wor with workers and WooCommerce solely. So this is our core uh, core focus. Um, I have spent uh, a lot of years coding, then managing projects, then managing clients. Uh, managing contracts, uh, quotes, uh, estimates. So my my current line of business right now is is mostly sales and uh, marketing. Uh, I would like to code, but I don't have the time or, or just my code is just say, get away from us. <laughs> so this is a little uh, intro uh, about me. Um, so, fun fact. What do you think is the percentage of failed IT projects? Just take a wild guess. 60 percent? 90. 90. 90. This is a pessimistic number. 
So 60, 75. 75. So it's around uh, two thirds of all IT projects are failed projects. So what is a failed category? It's either over time or over budget. Both. So or both. This is both. Or both. Okay, of course. So the thing is that I have observed throughout these 10 years that uh, you have two major problems. First major problem is communication. You all agree probably about that. So it's always, it's about communication mostly. Uh, the second largest problem is not having a plan. So not having a clear, right plan about what to do. So these are two main, uh, two main problems. Uh, we, will, we will talk mostly on this, uh, on this workshop about the second problem. So I cannot cover the uh, communication parts, uh, as I said uh, earlier. We will talk about the planning part, uh, what to write, what not to write, uh, how to manage tasks, uh, how to manage a uh, software project, uh, how to manage uh, your team from a technical perspective. It's a, it's a thing that um, I want this one hour and a half to be more objective and more, uh, more exact. So you don't go out there with a big cloud over your head, what the guy just said. So we, so we will not cover main uh, communication parts. Uh, so, uh, as I said earlier, having, having a clear plan about what to do and having a clear path about what to do and who will do what will solve 80% of your problems. 80% of your child problems on your uh, IT projects. And this applies to all IT projects, whether it's WordPress, WooCommerce, uh, Joomla, Kentico, uh, custom software, custom design, anything. So I have seen a lot that you have a big project and the team just doesn't know what to do. They don't have it in writing, they don't have a plan, they don't have uh, uh, estimations, they don't have priorities. So. Does anybody know what the backlog is? Are you familiar with it? How much? Forty uh, percent of people know. So backlog is a software dev term for task list. It's a it's a plain task list. It has around four or five major elements. It has what is the name of the task? What is the description of the task? What is the estimate? How much work will you put into into one task? and who will do it. So we'll now go through the major elements of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the backlog. It's, it's one of the simplest things that, that you can do in your IT project. And this is the most overlooked one. So, uh, we will go first with how to tackle description of one so, description of one task in software development can be done like, uh, I'm a user that need to do something uh, so that I can complete some task. So for instance, I'm an anonymous user that wants to leave his email address so that I could receive uh, blog post entries on a newsletter. So this is a typical description of one uh, software development task. So, we will now have one uh, workshop uh, assignment. Uh, do we have maybe some papers? And uh, they said they will be here. Ah, okay. okay. So can you pass down some of the papers? We have pencils. some questions so far about the structure of the backlog anything do you have papers
So this is the task. We need to estimate how much hours will we put into design, development, and content of this task. As an anonymous user, I want to subscribe to a newsletter, leaving only my email address so that I could receive new blog posts for the topics of my interest. This is a typical task when you're doing a WordPress uh, site, and for instance, client wants to have a newsletter subscribe in the footer area. So this is, so this is one of the first uh, re requirements for the client, and developers and designers need to estimate this task. So, we will do the estimations in the amount of hours. So you need to come up with how much do, do you think, how many production hours will this task take? And you need to take into account everything that, that you know, whether it's a, a back-end, front-end, design, uh, copywriting, uh, so anything that you, that you can come up with, how many hours will this task take for your crew to make? Is this clear? Kind of. Uh, I have one tip, one tip for you. So this room has 50% of this and around 75% of people are doing uh, business dev. You can pair up. So if you can pair up with, uh, with a developer, uh, he can help you with that. So you can make like joint estimations. Like you say, okay, I think it, I, will, I will need X amount of hours and I will need uh, Y amount of hours. So if you can pair up, that would be great. We can have around uh, 10 minutes for, for, this, uh, for this test. So just try to come up with, with some number. And if you have some questions, just shout at me, that's fine. So first question, uh, which categories which categories are the topics of my interest? So I would say the, the WordPress platform has three blog post categories. So the question was, how many, how many categories does the WordPress install have? So the WordPress implementation has three, three categories, three blog post categories. So let's say there are news, events, articles. was GDPR compliance, yes or no? <laughs> uh, I don't have a cookie, okay. sorry. Uh, so the answer is yes, GDPR compliance, yes. <laughs> but that's a really good question. If your client doesn't sell to the EU customers, then this question will, will be no. But uh, for the purpose of this workshop, the answer is yes. You can ask me anything. Uh, okay, if the client... Wait, I think for a second. Uh, you don't want to receive specific topics. Uh, we can only have one input field when he enters his email address. So we can decide on the topic by the place where users subscribe, or we can send him email asking him about the Topic he is interested when he subscribes. Everything needs to be on the front end. So it is up to you whether you want to have like a radio, uh, radio buttons of topic choices or check uh, check boxes of topics. But everything needs to be on the front end. Okay. I mean uh, next to the form. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
If somebody is done, he can just shout. No, sorry, sorry, that's a that's a bad idea. Nothing, ignore it. So the question is, uh, are we using third party uh, MailChimp or Mandrillo? So the answer is, uh, this is up to you. <laughs> One more question. Um, we, we are reasoning just about uh, registering users or taking them their email, not uh, about constructing the newsletter and managing the newsletter, right? Good, good question. So we are we need to register email email addresses so that we can later send blog posts to these uh, email okay. addresses. But now we are just evaluating the registration part of the process, right? Uh, but you need to store something into the database. Yeah. I don't know how to how to handle this test without it. So I would say include it in your uh, estimation. The, the data is managing. Uh -huh, you, uh, you mean like managing users? Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. That's not the part. Okay. Yeah. It was about managing the user itself. Yes. Uh, afterwards is not concerned. So do you have some estimations done? So how many of you have some something done? Only a couple of them. Okay. So we will have three more minutes.
Okay, so I hope you have something. Can you just start to shoot from this row, uh, table by table, what is your hourly estimation? And don't change the hourly estimation if you hear something that's wrong. Don't, don't do that. Just the, the total sum, total sum. Five and a half. Ten? Okay. Everything. Okay. Okay, quick, quick. How much? Five dollars. Five? Five dollars. Okay. Nine. Nine? 14. 14. Okay. One. You're a plug in person. Is that two? No, no, so you? 27. 27. Okay. 27. Okay. Seven. Seven. Two hours. Two hours. Okay. Eight. Eight? Yeah. Eight? Okay, you? Six. Next. I have ten. Ten? So four and ten. It's fourteen? So we would write like seven. Seven. Twenty. Twenty. Fourteen. Fourteen. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. You get twenty-five. Okay. Four. Sixteen. 
apartment you say okay I will buy the apartment for 10,000 uh, euros and for two and a half uh, million euros <laughs> so do you see the business problem here so the backlog is a list of tasks nothing more but this list of tasks have hourly rates inside so you see this is a big difference it's a big difference it's uh, it's it's one of the biggest problems in the whole software industry are estimations. Estimations of work, estimations of cost, estimations of functions, estimations of uh, implementation, uh, estimations of teamwork, estimations of what to do with the client. And this is the perfect example for one footer newsletter subscription, which is like the tech from the 80s. So, so if I would ask you a question, to build a one page or WooCommerce uh, that have only one product, we would also get into into this like oh it's a simple thing you just install team plug in uh, we just connect to some good host and it's working. We have a lot of questions. We had around ten questions here for this simple function. So my first point, you need to c communicate with the client. You need to ask questions a lot. So, okay, we covered GDPR, this, uh, this is a good, good question. We covered categories, this is also a good question. It's a basic WordPress question. You know? I mean, WordPress uh, evolved from, from a blogging platform, but we still have blogs and we still have categories, you know. So this is also a good question. You didn't ask anything about design, where to place the form, uh, what is the button, what is the copywriting, uh, what are the states of the button, what are the, uh, like, so for instance, when you click a button, but you didn't input the uh, email address, you know, you get some notifications, errors. Uh, if the JavaScript is, is not working, you will not get them. So it's kind of a, you know, there are a lot of moving parts here on this simple form. So I would say the 20 se 27 is, is fine. 27 is totally fine. In the end of the project, you will, you will spend that amount of hours. If you think that you will uh, you will just implement a plugin, activate it, and this will work off the bat, you are completely wrong. Then you should go to some other talks. <laughs> so one hour is no go. One hour is no go. Five hours is no go. Everything uh, under two days of work is a no go for this simple. Yeah. So are you going to break down that 27? like a lot of hours. Yeah. yeah, please break down the 27 hours. <laughs> okay, so first you have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is this. Be pessimistic. So, first you need a meeting with the client, copywriter, designer, and the client. So, if the meeting is uh, one and a half hours long, this is three hours of a meeting time, copywriter, designer, and client. So, this is three hours. Then you need to take uh, into account that developer will, will ask questions about. Okay, with what do we integrate this form? It's Active Campaign, it's Mailchimp, it's uh, SendGrid. I don't know. There are tons of platforms. So developers will spend one hour only on backend implementation. Then the developer will ask, okay, to what list do I need to assign these users, and how how do we group these users, and how do we segment these users? Because this is connected. 
to this. I could receive new blog posts for the topics of my interest. So the user needs to have some kind of selection on the form, whether it's uh, radio buttons or checkboxes or uh, some kind of control to determine that she or he wants to assign himself to I know, articles or only events. So developers will have question, okay, but what if the user doesn't want any of the categories and wants all of the categories? So this raises new questions. And when you spend time on meetings and questions and stuff like that, this costs time. Okay. So, you are right. This is a task for a project manager that he needs to write down together with the developer and the client a clear functional specs. So, you need to have a clear backlog about what to do. So, this is your first step. Because if you don't do it, you will do it later because you will need to do it because the client will ask you at the end of the project, okay, but where, where are my users and how are they uh, segmented, and then your developers will start to ask questions, then you will spend 55 hours. So this is the idea of this workshop. It's not a bad thing to spend 27 hours at the start. You need to plan it. On the other hand, let's be realistic. In most cases, if you go back to a client and you say, well, please, you could do in 27 hours, yeah. you don't need to do all this because it's not going to be the project. So, uh, Exactly. Uh, this is a good question. I will I will have some later slides about that. I will have some later slides about that. Uh, uh, I will get to you. So uh, this is a sales question. This is a sales question, and this is also a communication question where the sales team needs to explain to the client that his project is not a simple one page that you can do in one day. That it's a big IT project that this client will have benefits from. So it's an investment. But we'll we'll get later to that. Uh, okay. Yeah, just, I think what everybody's trying to mention is just like it would probably be easier to see, or maybe that's the next, uh, like the next paper, uh, to see all the acceptance criteria which is required in order to build this simple feature. That's that. Then it would make it easier for everybody to understand that this is like 20 yeah. hours, 25 hours to build, and this is also like the whole user story uh, with the, all the criteria which you can present to the customer, and then I will probably understand that it's not as simple as they should, as they think it should be. Exactly, yeah. Oh, we'll have some topics later about the uh, level of details of the uh, and types of uh, documentation. Uh, so, we will, so we will get back to that. Uh, the idea of this task is just to show you, yeah. Uh, the idea of this task is just to show you in one group of people, and we all know WordPress, and we all have some kind of experience, that estimations vary a lot. A lot. So this is not like cars, house, uh, building a garden, or uh, cooking a meal. So this is a lot. So this. So we have from one hour to twenty-seven hours. This is a lot, and this is for a simple function. So this is. I just want to tell you that um, the reason of the backlog is that you break down all of these little little tasks and you estimate them because this will just be a starting point for your for your project. This is our backbone. You know, backlog is backbone. We need to remember that it's 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 the basis for all of your projects. Okay. Uh, if this, for example, happens uh, during the uh, one project, so you are making website or uh, app, and the client came up with that in the middle of the project, do you uh, change the, the uh, proposition? I mean, do uh, you charge extra, or uh, in which case? Uh, for example, you won't charge that extra, 
or uh, you know how do you manage that? So this is a good question. So this is called in, in the software industry a change request. So this is defined as a change request. Change request. Yeah, of course we we, we all do it. Uh, change requests are easily handled if the client need is a new thing. So if client wants something new and he didn't say it, and you have it in writing that you didn't say it, so then you're you're probably in a good spot. And uh, you should you, you should build this. You should estimate this task, and you should uh, enter it into the contract or or your project management software. And you should build it for sure. This is a no-brainer. Uh, the trouble is uh, the trouble is uh, misunderstandings about functional specification and what the colleague said uh, acceptance cr criteria. What is good enough for the client? I mean, sorry, not for the client, for the end user. Um, uh, if does our form for MailChimp subscription, does it work real business benefits? So does the client have a real business benefit? If the client says, okay, this is, this, this, this is what I need, this is accepted, then this task is checked as done. Um, the other no-brainer issue is bugs. Uh, client, uh, clients can ask you for, they see some bug, or they see some bug in, in form handling or error message or something like that, so um, you should estimate this, but do not build a client for it. There is also one, one other thing, uh, our clients sometimes uh, tend to push the change request as bugs. <laughs> so you should be aware of that. This is a, I would say, human thing. This is not uh, connected to any type of client. They say, okay, uh, I thought that this form will, will work in a that and that way, this is a bug that needs to be fixed. You should be really aware of this wording. So wording in software development is everything. So first you tell the client, okay, it's not broken. It's doing its job like we wrote in this, esti in this estimation. And then you say, we can do like you want. This is a change request and I will bill you X amount of hours after you estimate it. So, no brainers are pure bugs that are your fault. New change requests that are new functions and never, were never in the documentation. Gray area is when client submits bugs like change requests. So this is gray area. This is project management stuff. This is communication stuff that uh, I'm afraid we don't have time for this, but it's kind of like, you know, soft, soft skill. Um, there are a couple of tricks about this. So, 27 hours. 27 hours is a lot. This is a whole week of network. You know, it's, uh, if you call the meetings and lunch and everything, this is one, one week of work. First, break down your tasks to smallest possible grains. Like if you have decision about the backend, whether it's MailChimp, SendGrid, Active Campaign, this is a separate task, subtask. Uh, questions about copywriting. So what is the name of the form? What is the error message on uh, button submit? Uh, what are the states of the button? This is one test. So the button has like uh, mouse over, mouse in, mouse out, you know, like four, uh, four or five typical states. This is a separate test. Break down your task. If you have a task that is over 20, 20 hours long, you should break it down. You can also use one trick. It's called Fibonacci sequencing for the tasks. So you estimate the test like this. Either one hour, two hour, three hour, five hour, eight hour, 13 hour, 21 hour. So what is the tip of this? When you estimate, when you see that the task is complex and its complexity rises, complexity of the software tasks rises ex exponentially. So if you, if you have a task and you say it's five hours of work, and then you talk with your client, then you talk with your designer and your copywriter, and then you see some kind of complication. Don't place six hours, place eight hours. And this will mathematically include all of your meetings and emails and uh, design iterations and uh, another questions. So don't estimate like linearly, estimate like Fibonacci sequence. Uh, after 21, don't do the estimation. You need to break down the task. So don't place the test that is 40 hours long. This is not realistic. You, you, you cannot plan for, for this. 
Nobody can. Uh, wait. There is one big topic currently in software industry. You probably heard about Agile and Scrum, Kanban, Waterfall, project management methods, right? So, clients can ask you that your estimations are in hours, days, weeks, months, and Agile introduce story points. So it's kind of a cloudy concept. If you are a beginner, freelancer, uh, studio that is all starting into software, that use hours. Hours are understandable by client, by designers, by developers, and they are clearly multiplied by your hourly rate. So the client will know the list of your tasks, and he will probably know the list of your hours. And this is understandable, this, this is pretty important. Estimations in days are not realistic. So what is a day? A day for one team is something different for, for another team. Estimations in, in weeks are no go, so don't estimate in weeks. Client can ask you that. So client can ask, okay, give me that in weeks. How many weeks would be needed? Months also. Do not go into this. You are the expert. You are the engineer. You need to, if you are beginner or intermediate, use hours. Because they are simple, they are un understandable, just use them. Um, there are story points. So you will hear about agile articles and uh, software project management articles that some teams use story points. Story point is uh, like a virtual token that explains what is the complexity of the task. You can use it if you are advanced like project manager and you know, you, you, you have gone through project management met, uh, methods like waterfall, Kanban and agile and you know what you're talking about. Uh, but for purpose of this workshop, do not use story points. Uh, has anybody come, come to terms with story points? You know what this? Do you have some better explanation than me? Uh, is this what you said, the complexity of how hard? It's basically what you said, uh, the complexity of, of a task. Uh, how hard it is to, to do it. If it's uh, uh, like the newsletter, you would say one uh, story point. It, it doesn't. It's not connected to a number of hours. It's just uh, how difficult it is to to, to do it. And uh, how would you connect it to to some billing or how many hours do you need for one story points? I'm uh, I'm not sure because I'm a developer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and I you know I only learned about it in an agile agile class, but I haven't used it in a project. Okay, thanks. So for the purpose of this workshop, I just wanted to tell you that there are story points flying around for, for some project. Some clients could ask you, uh, please give me an estimate in story points. You just say no, I will give you the estimate in hours. For WordPress projects, which are like web application projects, you need to work all the time with web designers and copywriters and content people. Uh, they need to understand your work also. So this is a tool for uh, communication, yes. Are story points a sort of milestones? No, no. Milestones are... Um, <coughs> milestone is a, a date of your phase of the project. So when the design is done, this is a milestone. Done design. Okay. Okay. So, so one caveat. You see the scope? Remember that. And be careful when estimating. Be pessimistic. Take time for your estimation, because it will bite you in the ass if you don't. Um, communicate. Like, like the slide said, and ask more. Always ask more. You had really great questions, but these are not all questions. Your goal is to ask all possible questions. And yes, this is the task of the project manager and sales team and client and uh, senior developers to, to work on the whole spec. Because if you, if you don't do it, you will have chaos later. So you, will, so you will need to do it, and then this test will be 55 hours. This is empirical evidence. Yeah. One more thing about the uh, story points. Uh, it's actually when you uh, create a sprint, and then you say, like, for example, in a, in a sprint, uh, 20 story points can go. So you estimate based on that. Like, 
you, you, you add as many tasks and then you estimate and then uh, you have to have like, let's say, 20 story points in a, in a, in a sprint. In one sprint, yeah. Oh, we will come to basic concepts of Agile uh, later. Uh, so we, we now covered the task list, the backlog. And all of your web projects and all of your WordPress projects need, need to have it as granular as possible. So this is the so this is the basic this is our cornerstone. So what can also help you with with estimations? So do you use time tracking? Yeah. How many of you? Time tracking? <laughs> ah, great. So around seventy-five percent. Uh, what do you use? Uh, what? Uh, harvest. Harvest. Free agent. Toggle. Jira. No. Huh? Another tool. So okay, you have Harvest is the I think biggest player. We use it for around eight years, I think. It's really great. Um, I'm not selling Harvest here. I mean, you can also use uh, Zoho People, FreshBooks, uh, Harvest. Uh, Jira also has uh, time tracking uh, inside. Um, use time tracking. So this is the second caveat. If you want to take something from this workshop, if you don't use time tracking, use time tracking. Time tracking will solve you three things. First, it will give you the answer on how many hours did you need for one similar function. So if you complete one project with one client, so let's say you had WooCommerce with Facet with P integrated, and you needed to make some 30, 30 filters with 30 uh, taxonomies, and uh, it, was a, it was a big task. Uh, Harvest will give you the exact amount of hours for this test. And when you do the next sale, and when you do the next project, this will help you a lot. So this takes out all of the guesstimate, you know, out of the, out of the equation. So this is the first thing uh, when you use time tracking. It will give you an answer on similar tasks, which you, what you did before. It will also, of course, give you the, uh, the scope of on what types of tasks does your team work. Because so one one example a time sheet in Harvest looks like this. We have so we have so, okay. database development. So this is a billable task. It's it's for the client. We also have internal task sales offers. So this is not billable. And then you, this is up to you, how, how would you structure your timesheet tables? But write everything inside. If you have a meeting with the client, write it down. If, you have a, if you're doing a sales offer, write it down. If you're doing a database development or GDPR audit or anything, write it down. Uh, most time tracking tools can be brought down. You have a client, client has projects, projects have tasks. Uh, we have done it. Uh, Internally, our tasks are backend development, frontend development, design, copywriting, content making, uh, sales offers, meetings. So these are our tasks. So, so this is the type of tasks. Based on this, we can. Sorry. Based on that, we can see if the company is doing mostly design work or frontend work, or how much meetings overall do we take. So use time tracking. We have questions about this or the reasons why not to use time, time tracking. Okay, great. So, when doing the estimations, second tip. So, do you know the ratio between bug fixing and code, code writing? In favor of what? It yeah, goes for um, uh, testing and uh, bug correction. 10%. Okay, anybody else? Come on. Reverse. You have experience with this, come on. Nothing? Okay. So it's uh, one over one, so they're the same. So this is from a book. It's one of the best books that you can ever read about software dev. It's Mythical Man Month. 
It's a book from old IBM professor that did some Navy software back in the 50s and, and 60s. You'll be amazed that nothing has changed from these times. Nothing. Developers don't write documentation. Documentation is not clear enough. Estimations are overly optimistic. Nothing has changed. So read this book. This is a really, really great book. It's, I think it's a recommended book for all software dev, dev classes. It's Mythical Man Month. Um, so the answer is one over one. They are, they are the same. You can include this into your estimations. If you know that you will have some co complexity about the task and you are doing it for the first time. So for instance, in, in WordPress, typical first time uses is changing contact form plugins from Gravity to HTML forms. So you will have this, these types of tasks. We had also internally changing uh, filtering on WooCommerce to FacetVP or changing search engines from native WordPress to SearchVP or something like that. So you have experienced team but they are first time doing search VP, fast VP, ACF, you know. So you will have some first time uh, use cases and you will have, I mean, you, you, you will have it all the time. So you can include this into your buffer. It's better to include it than not. And this is not connected to sales because you have some other tool that, that, that we will talk about. This is your hourly, hourly rate. So, uh, there are, after you are done with your backlog and after you are, went with the client uh, about what needs to be done on your site, there are mainly two types of uh, documentation that, that will handle your project. So it's functional specification and technical specification. Functional specification is a business document. It will tell this estimation that we now worked uh, that the user needs to subscribe to MailChimp to several blog post cables. So this is one function. This goes into functional specs. Into technical specs, you will explain to your, to your developers and to your whole team how will you do it. So it will be uh, Gravity Forms, uh, Contact Form 7, HTML Forms. It will be connected to MailChimp, SendGrid. So this is technical uh, implementation. Uh, ideally, technical specs should not influence the sales and business part. If your developers can pull this off in some easier way or they, they, they know their shit, you know. So this will be written inside the uh, technical specs. Um, we don't send technical specs to clients. This is our choice. Sometimes you are uh, obligatory to uh, send it, but we, we don't talk with our clients about our te technology choice because this is not on them. We are the experts and you are the experts. So you need to decide what is your tech choice about it. There are a lot of WordPress projects that clients say, I want Gravity Forms, for instance. This is a typical request. You need to be aware of that. And you, you mustn't allow that, that kind of talk with your client. You need to talk with your client about the content business, their, their goals, uh, what the end user needs to um, experience. But clients, they, they shouldn't talk with you about the plugin choice, the server choice, the uh, hosting platform choice, the CDN choice, you know, all this type of stuff. This is, this is up to you. Okay. So, you asked the question about the, uh, how, do you, how do you make the sale? So, this estimation that we talked about, it's basically not connected to the sale. This is your internal plan. This is connected to how many hours and uh, how many man hours will you need to uh, finish something. But you have some other tool uh, that will influence the sale, this is the hourly rate. So you also know as we danced around like from one hour to, to 27 hours uh, about one, uh, one little function, one little function under quotes, uh, you know in our industry that hourly rates also dance a lot. So you know, you, you can you have guys on Fiverr, guys on Codable are much more expensive. Agencies in uh, New York are charging 200 bucks per hour. So we have a lot of scope, a lot of scope. So you will, of course, get, get questions. So our typical question is, we have an office in, in New York. Our hourly rate currently is 150 bucks. This is, in my opinion, and this is 
subjective opinion, <coughs> the hourly rate that you need for make the agency work, I would say to bare minimum. Um, I know this is kind of a lot for, for the whole region. In Croatia, for instance, the hourly rate is around 50 bucks per hour. Um, but the thing is that, this is the problem, the quality of the 50 bucks per hour in Croatia can be larger than some agency in the States. And this is the problem in our industry. So, of course, my recommendation for you is charge as more as you can. This, of course, this is connected to your knowledge. You know, it's, uh, if you know more, if you are the expert and you are the only one in the field, of course you should, you should charge more because you need to include the education, the conferences, the meetings, the brainstorms. Uh, your company tools. So, for instance, if you use Kinsta hosting, you know, which is like a premium WordPress hosting, it costs a lot. It's not cheap. You can fire up Google Cloud Server for three bucks for, for one month, but this is not the solution, you know. So, I don't have like clear tips on how to charge more, but don't back down on this. Yeah. Don't back down on your estimations of work. Don't lower your estimations to make the sale. Don't do it. It's, it's a bad practice. You can you can you can lower this. So if you if you want the sale and the project is great, it's for a great client, and you are doing some good work for some non-profit, and they need great WordPress and donations plugin and everything, and you want to do it, then lower your rates. This is a good tool for you if if you want the project to pass. Don't lower your hourly estimates and charge more. Charge as as much as you can. I don't know. This is a sales process. This is not sales sales workshop. I would say that one thing that that can help you. Uh, what I see in our company, always get the client on the Skype. Always don't sell over emails. This is a typical that some agencies do. They this, they receive RFP proposal for proposal and they send the estimate in one hour through mail okay this is my estimate for WordPress implementation this is uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in one hour this is not real when you get a contact from a client ask for a Skype meeting this is your first like first sentence that's it if the client doesn't want to have a Skype meeting with you then you have alerts over your head so this is a client that you don't want to work with so this is really simple. Um, the thing is that web projects are complex projects, you, you know that. But one thing that separates us from, from other, like accountants, for instance, or engineers, we solve a problem for a client and they will receive extra cash flow based on our solutions. So if you're building a WooCommerce, if you're, if you're building a WordPress with a donation section, our solutions, our design, our copywriting, our development, speed of the site, influences their future revenue. So you need to put yourself in that mindset and tell the client, okay, we need to have a Skype. I need to see what is your business, what is the size of your team, what is your size of your uh, company, um, what are your revenues, what is your currently uh, monthly visits, or so what, is, so what is the general scope of, of the work? After that meeting, you, you write down the notes and then you can have some basic proposal of what you want to do. Then you have another Skype meeting. So if you're selling, I know, WooCommerce projects for $20,000 or $30,000, it's normal to have four Skype meetings. So this is normal. You, you, you cannot sell your ex expertise and uh, that amount of hours, like 150 bucks per hour. And with these estimations, without having uh, communication with the client. So this is one of the most important things. Uh, sorry, question. Yeah. Uh, can I just uh, follow of course. up? So this is one way of looking at pricing, but you can also look at, for instance, on a per project basis. And it also can depend on the plan. So for instance, you can sell similar website for $10,000 or to one client, and Inside to the same functionalities for the other plan for let's say fifty thousand dollars. So it also depends from which country the plan comes and a lot of variables. Yeah, this is basically this. So you lower your 
hourly rate based on the origin of the client country, their business model, their size of the team, your wish to participate in this project, uh, everything. So you can, uh, I mean, this is only one way of looking at it, of course. But uh, I just want to tell this is like uh, down to earth, simple way of looking at it, because in the end, you will spend hours. So you will spend some hours on this web app. So yeah, you are right. Uh, you include this in your uh, hourly rate. Um, there is one concept that some agencies are pushing. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not happy with it. Charging based on the value given. So this is kind of so, if I see that, uh, that Nike has contacted us, and I see that they will have like large e-commerce revenue, then some agencies try to, try to determine what will be the value of this project. Uh, this is also for advanced talk. This is not so much simple thing. It raises the question of ethics, like Morton talked yesterday. If you're charging one client like large premium, is it ethical? You know? Is it? Uh, you can have a premium service for it. You, you can. This is it. So you say, okay, you are a big client. You will have large needs. We will work a lot on you, we will have a lot of expertise, then your hour, hourly rate is 165 bucks. So this is your tool to include all the client variables. And it's a simple tool, it's an understandable tool for all of your team members. Charging based on some kind of implicit value that you cannot measure, it's a shady business. You, you can try to do it in some objective, ethical way. Uh, I, I, I just want to point you out that in 10 years of when we, we were doing web apps, I have not seen this kind of project be like ob objectively priced. There are some agencies that are taking, uh, so for instance, for WooCommerce installs, you can take the percentage of revenue. This is kind of measurable thing. You, you, you can't do that, but you need to be aware of one thing. You are not controlling the product price. You are not controlling the product uh, quality. You are not c controlling the um, uh, client's customer service. So you are not controlling these factors. So basically, you can tell the client, okay, we will optimize the site. We will do conversion rate uh, optimizations. Uh, we will scan analytics every day. We will optimize the server so we have increased conversions, everything, but mainly the revenues will not be up to you. Yeah. Uh, and there is also the fact that, uh, depending on the business, there are clients that make an order through phone or email. Yeah. And you can't have that number from yeah, the, exactly. the partnership. So this all complicates things. Yes. And you, you all know that software development in itself, by design, is really complicated. So this is the reason why that book, Mythical Man Month, the concepts haven't changed in 50 years. It's complicated. Uh, you should also educate your team about the basic concepts of service industry. Like, service industry has something that's called uh, perishability. When you are done, something that is that was in the air vanishes, you know. It also has something that is, um, service that you provide is connected to the author's work, to designer, developer. So every designer has some kind of personal input into the project. So this is also something that is connected to services. Uh, because of that, services are complex. And software industry in itself is really complex. And you need to utilize the tool to make this simpler. So if you agree with the client that you will have your revenues, based on their revenues, you are making things more complicated because of what you said. You also said, for instance, you have one website and you will sell the same website to some other client. Good luck. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe there is a type of around the Productization of the service is making things simpler. So in Everlab, we have one service called VP Watch. We combined hosting, backups, uh, security, anti-malware, uh, WordPress updates, everything in one package. We described it 
in, internally it's re really simple for, for the client you pay hundred dollars or thousand uh, dollars per month based on your largest of the, of the site and we charge it via, via credit card the whole process is pretty simple you know? so productization of the service is great but it means making things simpler not more complicated this is the caveat okay Okay, so uh, I don't know why I placed this here. So it's a, it's a screenshot of Harvest, you know that, you know. So it, it basically tells you on um, what kind of tasks is your company working. I placed it here because you can then analyze how many billable hours do you have in one year. So you can take that also into, into account when you're making the uh, estimations in your sales process. So this is also really a good way of uh, tracking tasks. So you see that we, we have done a lot of design work, but front-end and back-end combined is around uh, 5,000 hours. So it's more than design. On project management, we spent 1,000 hours. So you should all analyze this throughout the year. Our billable rate is 68%. This was in 2014. Our team was then, I don't know, pretty, pretty smaller. We have now 20 people right now. Our billable rate is 50%. So this is just some kind of, I don't know, feedback from me to you. That it's, I mean, I'm not happy with it, of course. Um, but it, it's the cost of having a team of more than seven people. You know, when you have a team of seven people, then you can coordinate really easily. And seven is a number when all psychologists and all um, industrial engineering experts say that seven is the maximum, a maximum amount of people in one team. When you go over this number, when you, are in, uh, when you have 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, 50 people, then starts things, uh, things tend to, to get complicated. And then you'll have billable rate around 50, 50%. This is also up to you. Um, we, so we placed design, dev, content, so everything that is creative and pure production, this is billable hours for us. Everything that is meetings, project management, uh, administration is non-billable for us. This is our setting. I don't know if it's, if it's right. It, it works for us because it, it helps to separate the two. But this is up to you. So, when you are done with the, with the backlog and all of your uh, estimations and all of your functional specs and all of your technical specs, uh, then these are basically, I, I would not say copied, but they, they are kind of merged into a contract. Uh, what I have seen with, with contracts and uh, digital agencies, um, they place fixed dates of uh, of launching the site or launching the app. This is really bad practice. So if you have fixed date in a contract, uh, it does not allow any iterations on design, on copywriting, on bug fixing, on uh, changes or anything that, that the client will ask and the client will ask. So first tip, do not place fixed dates into your contracts. This is really bad practice. What you can place is, of course, working hours. And we help our, our clients uh, for their planning that we say we will need five working days for something. Okay. Working days for something. So this is our, our way of telling the clients so they can plan from the, from the business side. We don't place fixed dates inside the contract. We say, okay, our wireframe will take five days, uh, design first uh, iteration, 20 days, and then after we approve it, then we'll need 40 days for uh, software dev. So this is how we do it. Um, do you have some questions about this? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite tool for uh, mockups, wireframes, whatever? So, uh, we have a couple of them. Uh, it's uh, Real Time Board. Real Time Board is perfect for uh, collaboration and uh, doing wireframes. Uh, and we use Envision for mood boards because they're like 
really easy to send to clients. And uh, I think that's it for, for mockups. Uh, our crew use, uh, uses Figma for uh, web design. So Figma inside, they can play around with the wireframes. Whether they are low-fi or high-fi wireframes, we use so Figma and uh, real-time board for communication with the client in vision. <coughs> Yeah, so this is a typical question. In the contract, we include one design iteration. So we say, we will send you the uh, template of the homepage, because homepage defines pretty much everything, like footer and the menu and, uh, and the whole uh, visual style. We, we always place that, that the client will have one iteration. And it's working OK. Yeah. It's working OK. Yeah. Uh, how do you handle when you make a backlog, make the plan, make everything, and the client doesn't want to go on with it? Uh, for example, he says this is too expensive. Okay, I'll find someone else. So uh, in a big team, I guess it's easy to. There is things that we need that cost. But how do you suggest the small team handle that? Uh, it depends on the type of the project. If you if you really really want to do it, then lower the hourly rate to your bare minimum. So you as a team, you, you have a bare minimum for your uh, like uh, cold engine, you know what it's called, I don't know what it's called. Um, so you, you need to determine your, your bare minimum. So for instance, in Croatia, your bare minimum is probably around 20, uh, 20 bucks. You know? So this is your lower rate, if you, if you want to go with the project. So for instance, we had a client, it's uh, UNICEF, and we, we wanted to work on this project, and we say, okay, we will, we will do it, and we just talk with the client what's their budget, and this was it. You know? okay. So you need to know your bare minimum, and you need to know if, if the project is interesting. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I've got a question. Yeah. And number four. Yeah. Um, my clients have fixed prices, always. Uh, how do you deal with that? What do you mean fixed prices? For what? They have a budget. So they'll say, we'll have this much money for a website. Okay. You have one good tip. Uh, you can cancel some functions out. So for instance, if your client has, okay, I have $40,000 for it, okay, fine. You will not have advanced filtering on the sidebar because this makes um, a lot of hours you know so so you can so you can cancel functions out and then you tell the client okay we will launch the website without these functions and later in the next year when you will have the budget we will include these new functions on your website so this is a product roadmap you know that's that's basically what we do we we tell them we can do anything for any budget and then just make it really simple if they want something. Yeah, we set the expectations instead of the client. This is fine. Yeah, yeah this is fine. Uh, so we are doing mostly WooCommerce. Our 80% uh, of our projects are uh, e-commerce e based. We can we we cancel the functions. You know, so for instance, client wants uh, integration with the Salesforce. Now this is a big thing, and we say okay. You don't have the budget for it. We will do it in 2019, and this works. You can also simplify existing functions. Mm -hmm. So for instance, cancel the newsletter subscription and make it on, on the checkout. Maybe it's uh, simple, you know. So you, you can do that. Uh, you can also tell the client no. Yeah, so this is also one tool that, that uh, a lot of folks don't use. You can also do spring cleaning. You can also, so for instance, based on the, on the harvest eh, estimated hours, what I do in spring, I look all of the send invoices for the client and all of the spend hours for, for the client. I say, okay, this is not working. They are having too much change requests, iterations. Uh, we don't have any, any value of uh, providing our expertise to them. On, during one year, we tell our clients, sorry, but we had to part ways. So this is also uh, normal. So say no, cancel functions but don't lower your estimations. You can make them simpler, but don't lower it. 
you will always have. Shall I wait? I'll wait. I'll wait. You wait. I'll wait. You can. So, do you know the number of meetings to close one sale? So after you've done the functional specs, uh, the contract, and you, you, you need to sign it, do you know the number? How many meetings and projects do you need to close one sale? So this is objective measuring throughout the whole sales process. But this is like industry average. So seven? Five. Three. 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 You want to work with us? <laughs> so it's basically 10. It's uh, In sales industry, you always have 10. You need to make 10 calls to make one meeting, and you need to make 10 meetings to make one sale. Of course, this varies a lot. With, uh, uh, agency expertise, your market position, your uh, sales team strength, uh, uh, who is doing the selling. So if, if your selling team doesn't know what they're talking about, they will probably have 20. So, 10, 10 is industry average. <coughs> oh my god, we don't have time. Sorry, but it's... Uh, so, I will, I will just really be fast with this. So, after you close the sale, you will make the project team. This is a typical team. You have team members, designers, copywriters, developers, team leaders of these developers. Uh, larger agencies have project manager, so one person that is dedicated to this project, and of course you have the product owner, this is the client. Uh, one tip for this workshop, I mean, it's, it's not basically a tip, it's, it's something that is a problem. It's called player manager syndrome. Did you hear of this? Player manager syndrome? Nobody? Do you have developers that need to manage something? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, so this is a big problem in, in our industry. You have developers that are seniors and they need to manage juniors. They need to manage documentation. They need to manage me as an owner. They need to manage designers, copywriters. They need to manage clients because they can only, they're the only ones that can give the actual answer. And this is called, in psychology, it's called player manager syndrome. It's, a, it's, highly, uh, it's highly connected to our industry when uh, senior developers are becoming managers and 50% of them want to become managers or system architects and 50% of them want to just code. And then you have a problem in your team. So this, this is a problem. I don't have answers for you. This is troubling us right now. We have four senior developers that are really good guys and they tell me, Kresho, we just want to code. I don't want to handle clients. I, don't, I can handle juniors if they are good. <laughs> and, but they they don't want to handle yeah. Okay, but, uh, always, uh, to clients in the so uh, in our company it's the, it's the project manager. Ah, project manager is uh, talking to clients. So we have some we we have a concept that is based on the book uh, Mythical Man Month. The person who is doing the tasks should talk with the client. So we abandoned account management on purpose. We had account manager, it was not working. We had a dedicated project manager, it was not working. So right now, we assemble a team. We assemble a team that is based on a client, a developer that, that will do the work, and he's junior, so this is a mentor, and a, and a designer, so this is a, our, our team. They communicate everything through Tell, and uh, this works, this really works. Uh, this is me. Yeah, we have we have one team that is basically I would say operations. So we handle billing, invoices, estimates. Uh, there are four of us uh, in the team, and we handle this. But we talk a lot with our developers and our designers. I mean, when we are doing the sale, everybody is on it. You know. Okay, so this is something that if you if you if you rise from seven people to 10 people and 12 people or 20 people, you will see, you will see this syndrome happening. Uh, ways to deal with this is, of course, uh, communication, mentoring, coaching, uh, talking with your developers, talking with your team constantly, constant change. So this is something that, uh, so this is not easily solvable. We cannot solve this on, on, on this workshop. You just need to be aware of it. 
that most developers don't want to do management, but from the team perspective, they need to, to do management, and this is a problem. It's had its name. Um, you should always have one product owner. If you have multiple product owners, multiple clients telling you their feedback, this is a big problem. So you place in your contract, you always place in a contract one product owner. This is pretty important. It's the same importance as not having a fixed dates. So you say, okay, Kelly, you will be the product owner and we will get all the feedback, all, all the comments, and all, all the approvals from you. And you're the product owner, and that's it. If you have multiple, then you'll have chaos. Uh, what, what for instance, happening in WordPress projects is the CEO comes to the later stages of the project. You know that. You need to have a meeting with him on the Skype, like mano a mano, you know. Like, please, we are working a lot on this. This is the whole backlog, you know. We need to take care of all, all of these tasks. Could you please send your feedback first to Kelly? She is the product owner. You need to have a talk with the CEO because this this will happen on all uh, on all uh, large projects. The CEO will try to jump into it, say, "Oh, this is bad. This is not what we wanted." But Kelly knows what she wanted. Okay, you know what waterfall is? It's okay. I will skip to that. So okay, I will not skip to that. It's. So, waterfall, uh, when your project passes, when your contract passes, and you are, doing the, you, are, you are doing the project, waterfall is a project management methodology that is understandable to everybody. You have phases of work, and you have a lot of blockers. Design team cannot start to work if they don't have content, and developers cannot start to work if they don't have design. So this is typical blockers of, of waterfall. Uh, so Agile tried to solve that with sprints and uh, I don't know, it's a kind of a mess for, most of the teams say that Agile, I implementing Agile is a mess uh, in their team. So what we use, we use Kanban, it's a pretty simple uh, methodology, it's just say what needs to be done, what are we doing and what is done. Uh, Kanban is basically under Agile umbrella of project management uh, methodologies. I can, I can only tell you my experience, it really works. It, it works for small teams, it works for teams to 30 people, it's, it's uh, understandable, it's, it's uh, visible to everybody, and it's uh, kind of, you know, like uh, go-to method if you are a team under th uh, 30 people. Uh, Agile can be implemented on larger projects. If you have like, uh, Agile team needs function to do in one sprint. So I think you cannot do this in smaller WordPress projects, the smaller WooCommerce projects, yeah. Okay, but can then even for your situation where you don't have strict dates to deliver the project, but, but hours? You, you can have, I mean, uh, if you set a fixed date, you have some purpose for the, uh, for the fixed date, you can set it up in the Kanban. I mean, I mean, so we use Trello. We have uh, swim lines in Trello, and uh, sometimes we, we set up uh, uh, dates. It's, it's not usual. It's not usual. We set up dates, and then the client says, oh, no, wait. We need some copy changes. And then we also ch uh, change the date, you know? So it's, uh, you, you can set it up if you want. This is up to you. Do you use this on the panel, or do you share the board with the client? We share board with, with the client. We first used uh, Google Sheets for backlogs. We now use Trello. It's great. We are monitoring it a lot, you know, so it, it doesn't happen. I mean, this. This is connected to a change request, you know. We, we, we see it and then we say, no, this is on ideation. So it's, uh, what is this? Oh, okay. Seniors effectiveness, juniors effectiveness. What do you think is the rate or ratio? Two to one? Four to one? Four to one. So by this book is 10 to 1. I know. 
I have, I have, I have seen it in practice. I think it's uh, 10 to 1. So this book is, in, in my opinion, empirical opinion, it's, uh, it's uh, correct. Uh, so, so this is pure project management. And uh, who will you assign to one task? What is the big problem? Don't assign multiple persons to one task. So Kanban board, if you have one task on your Kanban board, one assigning one task, remember that. If you, if you have two assignees for one task, the shit will not get done. You have a uh, saying here in uh, Serbia, više baba kilovo djete. So više baba kilovo djete means uh, multiple grannies, the job will not get done. You know, so it's uh, uh, don't place the So one task, one assignee. Okay, so these are the, the typical tools. All of them are great. We use them all. Uh, Asana, Basecamp, and Trello are for mixed teams. If you have developers, designers, content makers, uh, you can use them. Jira is great. Uh, we use it internally. So we uh, copy Trello tasks into Jira. <coughs> and Jira is for us uh, internal project management tool. Jira is mostly for uh, software development. But it's, it's really great. Yes, yes, exactly. So we place all, all the functional specs in uh, Trello board, and then we we kind of have some in integration with Jira. They are copied to Jira, and on Jira then we have technical uh, te and technical discussion and technical uh, specs in Jira. And we also connect Harvest with uh, Jira. So Jira has a, like a really great widget. You can connect Harvest time tracking inside the Jira issue. And when you track time, it connects what is the task done, like really granular. Um, okay, so this is for support tasks. Uh, we use Zendesk. We now use Trello for uh, for support and alerts and uh, notifications. Uh, also for uh, handling monitoring of your hosting. So we take care of all of the hosting and backups and uh, security and uh, monitoring and uh, alerts for our uh, VP clients. Uh, we track servers with New Relic, PHP layers with uh, Rollbar, and the whole application health with uh, Status Gate. These are all these feeds are all connected to Slack. So whenever we have a problem, the whole team can receive notifications and uh, know, act on it. So this, these tools will, will cover all of your WordPress stack. So from the database to your front end, to your uptime and downtime, and everything. And this works. So this is like typical how how we monitor one WordPress install. And uh, we largely use Google Data Studio for client reporting. It's a really great tool. You can do a lot with it. You can uh, you can ingest database entries, Google Sheets, uh, analytics data. You can insert all sorts of data into Google Google Data Studio and mix and match it and do functions and graphs and send it to client. It's free. So it's really great. Um, so, so what is the purpose of all of this? We always take care of our of our clients and, the, and our apps. So when we finish the project, we always maintain it and we always evolve it through Trello and through Google Google Data Studio. The thing is this: uh, you need to keep your clients. This is pretty important in the service business. Do you know what is the ratio of customer acquisition cost and customer retention cost? Four to one? Okay, it's ten to one. So it's also the sales thing. It's ten times more costly to attain new clients than to keep the existing ones. This is this is the basis of service industry, of all service industries, especially WordPress, WooCommerce, uh, web app industry. You need to keep your clients. This is pure math. Of course, you need to provide value. This is uh, this is not the topic here. I just I just want to tell you that this number is real. It's really hard to attain good quality clients. You you probably know that. So you need to keep it like half uh, in Atlanta. This is also uh, <laughs> domestic saying. Uh, okay, okay. Can we just have five minutes more? Okay. So tips for getting paid. Tip one, break your project budget and your contract into as many rates as possible. 
don't have like okay this website will cost hundred thousand bucks you will pay me at the end of the project don't do this so break your project budgets with the clients in the contract into as many rates as, as possible so what we do we we have monthly payments with a large, large project. We say, okay, this project will be 3,000 hours or 4,000 4, 4, hours, and we say, you will pay every month 400 hours, I don't know, something, something like that. So we try to break apart the budget into as many rates as possible. Second, use pyramid types, uh, not schemes, sorry, payments. It's <laughs> take the first rate to be 40%, then 30%, then 20%. Then when the project is done, the client will owe you just a little fraction of the money. So this is also pretty important. Uh, do you pay any advance payments? Yes, of course. So this is the uh, this is this like project start is a rate. And this how is much do you, do you charge this? Like advance payment is 40%. 40% is good. 50% is okay. Don't charge over 50. I don't think it's it's ethical to to charge more than double of your project when you, when you when you didn't start it. 50 is great. 40 is okay, 30 is okay. If the client wants to pay only 20%, don't go into this. I mean, go into negotiation, you know. <laughs> you need to explain all of your, all of your upfront cost and all of your uh, allocation, because allocation in our business all is resources. pretty important. Yeah, yeah. So go with 50. If the client next, then go with 40, 35, something like that. Okay. Okay. Any more questions about this? We have clients in Zenz for planning. The product is not sure that he will go on, but he needs a lot of help from your side to yeah. make work clear. Yeah. Do you charge him for that? Yeah, so this is called MVP. So this is minimum viable product. We, we provide uh, UX and UI services. So we just provide some wireframes okay. and some quick quick mockups in HTML. And we, we, we estimate this work. We say, okay, this will be 20 hours of uh, Consulting and then we charge this. Yeah, okay. uh, this is a good approach, by the way. So tip tip three: don't connect payment rates with milestones. So so this is one thing that's pretty important. Client will want to connect. So when you're done with design, I will pay, pay you this. When you when you're done with backend, I will pay you this. So don't don't go into this, because you're basically never done with milestones. Design is always always work in progress, front end is always work in progress, back end is always work in progress. Project can have milestones. The software that is called versions. So we launch version 1.9, 2.0, 2.1. These are milestones basically in the software development. Don't connect payment rates with this. Do connect transfer of intellectual property rights after the last payment. This is pretty important. So Tell the client, when you pay me the last rate for the project, I will then transfer the in intellectual rights to you. You will have some clients that, that will ask you, typical contractual thing, when the work is done, automatically the code becomes the property of the client. You should not go into this. HTML code, design, uh, content copywriting, our author's work, they are really easily describable by our industry and by our law. This is author's work. You have rights to it by the pure definition of making it. So when you make something, this is automatically yours. It can be transferred to clients only by a written document. Do this written document after the client has paid you everything. So this is tip four. You have some questions about this? Then we are done. <laughs> Thank you very much.